glitch hunter, Days Bagabones, managed to find a massive skip in Spyro the Dragon for the PS1 for the second time. If you follow Spyro speedrunning, you may have heard the recent news about a bounty being placed to find a consistent method of coveless, a trick that top-level runners use at the end of the any% percent category. You may have also heard about the promising new lead from a new face to the community, Days Bagabones. The work Days did on Coveless is impressive, and although we're not there yet, I currently believe that Boneless, as Days' method has been dubbed, will be the future of any percent. There's a lot of history to the any percent endgame skips. If you're not familiar with the history, I recommend watching The Rixer's video about Tuval. It's well made and goes into a lot of detail, but otherwise I'll very briefly go over the most important parts. For most of the game, progression involves collecting gems, dragons, and dragon eggs, culminating in 5 dragon eggs, 50 dragons, and 6,000 gems to get to the final world. In the final world, progression completely changes. In the final world, you have one level open, and three closed dragon heads. You're supposed to go through the end of level vortex in the first level, Nork Cove, to open the first head, which has the portal for the next level, Twilight Harbor. Similarly, you're supposed to go through the end of level vortex in Twilight Harbor to open the next head, which has the portal for the final boss, Nasty Nork. The final head contains the portal for Nasty's loot, a bonus level that only opens once you have 100% of the rest of the collectibles in the game. Naturally, speedrunners wanted to find a skip into Nasty Nork early, not needing to go through the first two levels here, and we ended up being very lucky in the design of this homeworld. The dragon heads for Twilight Harbor and loot are both completely solid on all their visible parts. There are no holes in their collision that you can just glide through. However, the head that houses Nasty Nork is different. The entire top half of this head is intangible. Just textures, no collision. So, if you can get enough height, you can very easily go inside the head. We have had multiple methods to skip into Nasty Nork early for many years. A couple of them require the Twilight Harbor head to be open, which requires you to run all through Cove, which is slow. There are also methods to skip into Nasty Nork without entering Cove, Coveless as it's called, but all current methods are incredibly difficult to perform. This is where Days Bagabones first comes in. Days found a new method of Coveless which is still difficult to perform, but the fact that Days found anything new at all in one of the most heavily scrutinized levels in any Spyro game speaks volumes about his intuition and abilities as a glitch hunter, as well as his persistence in the face of something that seemed impossible. That's the current state of affairs for major any percent skips. That's all well and good for any percent runners. Well, yeah, any percent has some great skips to get to the end, but what about 120 percent? Could there be a way to skip into the final level of 120 percent? Could early loot be a reality? Well, there's certainly a lot standing in its way. Like I said, the head that houses loot is completely solid on all visible parts. There are no massive gaps in the collision that we can just jump through. In order to break in, we would need a way to clip through a solid wall. There are places in this game where we can push through a wall, but it's a rare occurrence. People had tried many times to skip into loot using the rats next to the head, but no one had ever found any success, and even if they did, there was absolutely no way anyone was finding anything RTA viable. Now, I've been pretty actively speedrunning for about six years, and I've been around enough to see many things labeled as impossible or too hard, eventually be done by people, be done on console, be done during runs, and even become the standard for runs. I've been around long enough to know that you should never doubt the ingenuity of speedrunners. But early loot? No. If you asked me a month ago if early loot would ever be found, I would have told you that unless we find arbitrary code execution in this game, early loot was never going to happen. Even more so than the difficulty of finding a way in, there was a bigger barrier to us figuring this out, and that's that almost nobody was looking. Consistent Coveless would massively change the history of any percent. When we figure it out, 
top runners will have a dramatic increase in the number of runs that could beat the world record. Because of that excitement, dozens of people have looked for consistent Kovlis over the years, and I still strongly believe that we will find it. But early loot? From the perspective of most people, it would be neat if we had a way in there early, but it wouldn't be much more than a curiosity. It's not going to change much about any category, and I'll explain why soon. But because of that, there is no external motivator to figuring this out. In another universe, where speedrunning is about finding the coolest skips and figuring out the impossible, early loot would be as big a deal, if not bigger, than consistent Kovlis. But we live in this universe, where speedrunning is about being fast while following a certain set of rules, and early loot doesn't have a ton of value in that regard. Now, that's not to say nobody cares about finding cool skips for their own sake. I certainly do. I have always tried to be someone who speedruns for the sake of having fun and goofing around rather than being competitive and breaking records. But I'm also not smart enough to figure this out. I'm pretty good at applying existing knowledge to new places, but I've never been good at discovering completely new things in my speed games. And early loot, if it were to ever be found, would require something completely new. Well, I've been rambling long enough, and I think it's time to just say it. Day's Bag of Bones found early loot, and it did require something new, and I'm still in disbelief about it, and I've never been so happy to be wrong about something. In the few days since it's been found, there's already been several developments in the setup. Days's initial method was to perform some version of Coveless to land on the Twilight Harbor head, and then glide into the back of the nasty head, perform a precisely timed charge out of the glide into an intersection and collision between the jaw and the platform that makes up the level. By hitting this intersection just right, the collision of the jaw will push you right through the collision of the platform, putting you under the level. Now, there is a bunch of water under the level, so you have to act fast before you drown. You need to do a series of small jumps and glides towards the loot head. You can't jump too high, or else you go back in bounds above the level. You also need to be careful about where you aim, because the water does not extend all the way below the platform, and if you're not careful, you can miss the water. You can just glide below the level until you hit a death plane. Once you do make your way towards the loot head, how do you get in? Well, earlier when I said the head is solid on all visible parts, that's only technically true. However, it turns out there is a big hole in the collision if you come at it from the bottom. Now in my defense, I didn't know about this hole until they started talking about this the other day. Maybe other people knew about it, but even so, why would anyone expect to find a way to break through the collision to get below the level, when everyone who looked at this was trying to break through collision to get straight into the head? Later, I figured out that you don't need to start the glide from the top of the Twilight Head. You can do one of the much easier Twilight Harbor skips, like Tooth Roll, to get into the Nasty Head, and then start the glide from a wonky polygon inside there. This alone dramatically simplifies setting up the trick. Additionally, longtime Spyro speedrunner Teko8 found a method of clipping through the floor that doesn't require charging through the collision intersection. And on top of that, Teko has already performed this method on console. I also want to give credit to Waffle Wizard for making the first task of this trick once Days had figured it all out. This was first found just a few days ago. I think we're all still a little in shock, and we're still figuring out setups for it now. While we work on that, let's talk a bit about the implications of this skip. I said earlier that this won't change any category much. Why is that? Well, let's look at 120%. I don't mean the category, I mean the actual number. What does 120% mean? Have you ever noticed that 100% completion in this game needs 12,000 gems, 80 dragons, and 12 eggs, but then all of a sudden at the end, the last 2,000 gems equals 20 more percent? That doesn't add up. This game has a funny way of calculating your percent completion. It depends on how many gems you have. If you have 12,000 or fewer gems, the formula makes sense and is exactly what you think it is. As soon as you have more than 12,000 gems, the designers assumed you must be in loot at that point, which means you must have collected everything else anyway, so they changed the formula. 
If you have 12,001 or more gems, the percent completion formula only looks at your gem count. It's a simple equation that adds up such that 14,000 gems equals 120%. If the goal of 120% as a speedrun is to get your inventory screen to read 120% and see the bonus ending cutscene, then this would cut out quite a bit. We no longer need eggs beyond the requirement to get to Beast Makers, and we don't need dragons beyond the requirement to get to Dreamweavers. And how much time would be saved by cutting out the nearly 30 dragons taken out of the route? About three minutes. Again, this is still new, and the exact time save depends a lot on the new routes we could do, but it's in the ballpark of three minutes, in a category nearly an hour and a half long. It's certainly not nothing, but it's not absolutely game-breaking either. I mean, I'm 6th place in 120% right now, and if this was allowed in runs, I, comfortably in the top 10, could not use this to get a new world record. It's not like we're about to see a flood of 1-1x times, and that's IF it's allowed in runs. Some might argue that because it's not a massive time save, this does not warrant a category split. But, if this is allowed in 120, then we have the max completion category in a collectathon that doesn't require you to collect all the major collectibles. A lot of people wouldn't want to run that. Of course, we are still discussing as a community about the best way to handle all of this, but the most likely outcome will be a category split of some sort. Which category will be designated as real 120 is still up for debate, but it seems likely so far that the version of 120% with early loot will have a fairly inactive leaderboard, primarily being run by weirdos like me who just want to do something new for the sake of newness. It's also still completely undecided what the new category or categories will be called. I could make some actual guesses and suggestions for it, but I'd much rather just shitpost about it, and I honestly wish more people would join me on that. Another category that has been discussed is Vortex. If you're not familiar with Vortex, I will not try to explain it here. That would just take too much time. Just go watch Humbledon's video about the history of the category. I've linked it in the description below. Some have suggested that the only reason Vortex didn't include the Vortex in loot was because we couldn't access it without effectively just doing a 120 run. And now that it is accessible, we should consider changing the definition of the category to require it. Frankly, there's no good reason to seriously consider this. Vortex was always community-driven and very arbitrarily defined. We have no reason to change it up now, especially now that the leaderboard has many years of history behind it. On the other hand, why not throw out the old just for the sake of it? I mean, I used to think early loot was impossible, but here we are! Let's just push aside everything that we think should be true. Heck, I'm not even supposed to be making this video! I'm not a content creator! This YouTube channel exists for the sole purpose of me posting PBs and mediocre PlayStation games, not to make a topical video about the goings-on in some community that I'm sometimes a part of. But this is a post-early loot world we're living in now. Nothing is sacred, and there are no rules. The sky is red, fire is raining down from the heavens, and Zando Toaster is publishing content! How are any of us supposed to know what to believe when all of our preconceived notions of our universe have been summarily shattered by a single new discovery? Anyway, speaking of not believing things, I should tell all of you. I lied about something earlier. And not in a technically correct way. It was a straight-up lie. When I said that no category is affected by this, there is one exception. And to find it, we need to go deep. It's not a main category, and it's not one of the miscellaneous categories. And no, it's not even on the category extensions page, either. No, to find this category, we need to go down. Down to the dark places where few have ever tread. A place of which some have only heard legends, and others believe doesn't even exist. We need to go to... The Category Extensions Google Document, where unpopular and unloved categories are given the respect they demand. Here, you will find the category that needed early loot, 
but never thought it would have it. A category defined by the absurdist notion of such a skip being found. The category I'm talking about is True Vortex. True Vortex is almost entirely like 120%, except you reroute all the levels to end at the Vortex, and when you get into loot, you just go to the end of the level instead of collecting anything. Days Bagabones, in all his default Discord profile picture glory, found the Holy Grail skip for True Vortex, saving more than an hour from this category. And the history of this category will never be the same again. I mean, assuming somebody runs it again. Well, I'll probably run it again, once we have a good setup for early loot. And I think Sky probably will too. Unless we just ban early loot from the category. Or, like, make a separate category for it. Huh. That's the nice thing about this spreadsheet. We define these categories by what we want them to be. We get to do whatever we want here, with little to no regard for conventions or logic. What a comfy place. I should come here more often. Anyway, thanks for watching the video. If you liked it, don't bother subscribing because I never do things like this. If you want more Spyro content, I recommend checking out Laura and Deo Man. Their YouTube channels are linked below. They're the real content creators in the community these days. There's also links down there to various runners and videos that you may be interested in. And now I'm going to get back to finding a setup for Consistent Boneless. I'm pretty convinced pause buffering will be the way forward here, but I have yet to prove it. I just want to leave you on this note. Never doubt speedrunners' abilities to break their games. You will always be wrong.